Today we're working on risks, and the reason I really wanted to do this is because, obviously, as you know, I teach vinyasa, and I see a lot of people putting a lot of pressure on the wrist, complaining to me about wrist pain, not coming to vinyasa because it hurts their wrists, and possibly the same for Pilates. So George is going to be helping me today, talking about how it also incorporates in Pilates, because similar with bare weight on our wrists in Pilates. So, first of all, who has experienced pain in their wrists? Because then I know, great, I can really help you. Yeah. 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 Uh, and Emma also, who just left, I've seen her so many times in class going on the fist, which is a, is a modification, so I wish she could have stayed, but hey ho. So, wrists. Basically, when we are uh, working with our wrists, they're a very delicate joint. It's a very small joint, but with a lot of bones, lots of tissues, ligaments, tendons, all in a very small area. So, the thing is, what we have to understand before we even start talking about it is the range of movement and the function of our wrists. So our wrists are designed to move in many different ways, but we spend a lot of time with them in this sort of movement, which is um, the flexion of our wrist. So this way, if you think about what we do day to day, we're doing a lot of like writing, especially on a desk job, chopping, eating, everything you do is like this. Does anyone have desk job or yeah, or writes a lot, like painters, um, my sister's an artist, she gets a lot of like carpal tunnel, repetitive strain in the wrist. So this is the problem we have, is our wrist gets very used to being in this motion, so we call this flexion, and then we call this extension. Who have my other hand up? It's like a br brilliant hand up, I feel like it's someone. Um, which explained that. So this is the flexion of our wrist, and then this is extension. Now our wrist is meant to do both, but because we spend so much time with it like this, it gets used to being this way, and then this way becomes very difficult for us. So it's a little bit like if you think about your spine, what we always tell you in back bending is our spine is designed to bend forward and back, but we spend so much of our time with it in a mild forward bend. You all probably can relate with this, right? Especially, again, desk job, driving, eating, it's all forward bending. But then when we come to class and we're asked to do a back bend, Oh, it's so scary, it hurts, it feels unusual. So what we're doing is we're trying to get back to a full range of motion for the spine. Same thing here. So we come to class and we have to try and put it into this full extension and then put weight on it. It's difficult. So there's a few things we can do. So the three main points, and I'm going to just write them up on here so we can be really clear about them. Let me check I've got the right one. <laughs> Don't tell me. <laughs> okay, so we've got our first one. The number one thing we can do is stretching. but also strengthening. Okay. Number two is alignment. So these are all the things we're gonna work on today, okay? And number three is modifications. So if the first things don't work, then we have to modify for the time being until you build the strength, So the biggest problem we have is bearing the weight on the wrists um, in this extension. So first thing we do in um, vinyasa class, for example, is we come onto all fours ready for cat and cat. So if we do not stack our hands under our shoulders correctly, if we put them too far back, look what happens to the extension of the wrist, it becomes much more intense. So even in just a simple we don't even think about this being a weight-bearing exercise, really. Simple tabletop position. You're already putting your wrist into extension. So it's really important that your hands are either underneath your shoulders, or if you really suffer with this, a little bit forward. So that's a modification that you take straight away right at the very beginning, just to get your hand and your wrist in the right position, underneath your shoulders or slightly forward. So even before we begin doing any stretching, which we're going to do now, that's the thing you need to think about. So stretches, we're going to start with that. So... <coughs> Let's go for um, some great stretches to get our wrists in all the different movements. So we do some of them in class, but the first one we're going to do is we're going to bring the palms together. We've got Anjali Mudra, so you can sit up nice and straight. Either cross leg or on your knees, whatever feels good. Palms come into a prayer position, elbows out, and then you're just going to draw your wrists down towards your waist. So you feel then the extension here in the wrist starts to get stretchy. You're just going to press your palms, don't let this part come away. So you keep pressing them together moving them down until you feel that kind of place of resistance and you're just going to hold that kind of for about 15 to 20 breaths. Slow 
lunge a few now, but you can feel how that works. Stretching the wrists, strengthening the muscles, supporting the wrists. And then you can just relax and give them a bit of a shake. You can do the counteractive one of this as well, so you can put the backs of your hands together. It's kind of hard if you have bony hands like, like me, but you're just going to do the same thing, but then you move them up. You feel the stretch the other way. Yeah? There's so many wrist stretches. When George and I were going through this, it's like, we have this, we have this, but this is one we don't tend to do much in class, these two. Okay. And the next one is the figure of eight. So you can interlace your fingers, and then you're just going to do a little figure of eight with your wrists. So this is getting them nice and lubricated, moving them, warming them up. So all of these stretches are things that we should do in class. Sometimes the teacher will guide you through them, but also in classes like Pilates, I don't know if you want to explain, George, but sometimes you don't have time to do it, do you? So it's important. Yeah, it's important to warm up before you begin, especially the wrist. You don't have enough, enough time to do any of that. So it's nice to give yourself a little of isolation, a little twist, Oh, that's nice. We're just about to do that next one. So the next one is to hold the wrist like George just did and rotate like that. And you might feel little clicks or twitches in the wrist. It's normal. So go one way and then go the other way. And it kind of feels nice as well. You know, when do we ever really give our, our wrists so much TLC? And they're so important. We really rely a lot on them. Okay, so the other hand as well. The next one is really nice. Okay, so this next one we're gonna do is you're gonna clench your fist, but with your thumb on the inside, turn your palms to face each other, and you're just gonna move your knuckles down. Oh yeah, can you feel it? Do you not feel it? Get your arms up straight, move your knuckles down towards the ground. That's it. You should feel it all up here. Nice, then you can turn your palms to face the ground, and then just move your wrists. Trying to reach the heel of your arm bone forward. Nice. Give the hands a little shake. This is a really simple one, this next one. Interlace your fingers and reach your arms up overhead. Stretching the fingers and stretching the wrists. And this, everyone does this when they take a nice stretch. It's so simple. But again, giving the arms the wrists a nice stretch. You can do it this way as well. And you just hold these until a few breaths. Okay, and then the last one is what we do on all fours. So if you all come onto all fours, be mindful of what I showed you before. So place your hands just underneath your shoulders or slightly forward if it feels painful to you in the wrist. Always have your wrist crease line to the top of the mat. I'm going to go all of this a little bit more when we get to alignment, but still just taking care even when you're just warming up and stretching. So for this one, we're just going to turn the palms out to face the outer edge of the mat, and then slowly around as far as you can. So don't force your wrist into pain. Just go as far as you can comfortably. Feel a little bit of a stretch. You might be able to go all the way around, you might not. And then if you don't feel anything, a little bit of a lean away. And then a little bit of movement either from side to side or in a little circle. <laughs> Good. And be sure to go the other way as well if you go in a little circle. Okay, and then gently, first lean your weight forward, so you take the pressure off the wrist, and then walk your hands back around. Okay, the next one we're going to do a little bit more intense, we just do one hand at a time. So turn the top of your right hand so that the top of the hand is on the ground, and that you've got the front of the wrist in line with the front of the mat. Now you're just going to gently lean away from your hand, and again, a little bit of movement just from side to side to start to wake up one point of the wrist and forearm. So you should feel a really nice stretch here in your, in your top of your forearm. And I don't know about you guys, but I always feel a lot of tension there myself. It's a good way to feel that. And slowly leaning forward once again, and releasing, that little bit of shake. And then the other side. Top of the left hand on the ground, a little 
even if he doesn't feel much different, it's so important that we do these stretches. You don't have to do all of them, find them before, do them every day, because then you're going to get back your range of motion, just like your back bends, you have to do them every day, you get back that range of motion so that it's less painful and less difficult for you when you come to class. Then you're able to focus more on form and alignment and all the things you're going to go over next, so that your practice flows more easily, you enjoy it more, and you have less pain. This is what we want at the end of the day. So let's move on to, um, has anyone got any questions about stretching and strengthening? I had something else on strengthening actually. Ah. So we have to work up. With, to strengthen our wrist, we have to work up to put a full weight on the, on the wrist. So when we do weight bearing, start with um, postures and exercises which take less weight on the wrist, such as down dog. So obviously plank, you're putting much more weight on your wrist than the down dog. So if we start off straight away by trying to hold a plank for like a minute, Oh, it's so hard, but if you try and hold a down dog for a minute, it's easier. Can anyone tell me why? Because the weight is just above the back. Yeah, also. One of the big things, think about the... Exactly, less, less extension of the wrist. So, when we take a down dog, look at the angle of my wrist now, compared to when I come into the plank. Yeah? So this is why it's important to start with something like down dog. Really good modification, which we will go over in down dog, is to bend your knees and then your weight is shifted back more into your legs and your hips and it's less on the hands. You have knees in my fingers. It's less there. So that's a really good way if you find doing a down dog, really showing this on your wrist. I see people coming up and down, up and down in down dog. If that's you, then use it today. Please ask me questions or if you don't understand so we can make you feel like you can be in your down dog comfortably, safely, wrists are supporting you. Okay, so let's move on to, um, to our alignment. So, the most important thing of all is our hands. They're so important to support our wrist because putting all of our weight here, how we use our hands, it's a bit like how we use our feet in balancing postures. So, first we're going to identify the four corners of the hand. So, if you spread your finger out, you're going to look for the fleshy part of the base of your thumb, the base of your index uh, and middle finger, so it's sort of there, the base of the little finger, and then this pad right here. So they're the four corners of your hands. So when you place your hands down on the ground, you can just do it so it's seated, you don't have to come into a down dog, just place your hands down on the ground. I want you to just identify feeling those four corners of your hands on the ground. Okay? And then see if you can just press down through those parts of your hand. Because what happens quite a lot of the time in down dog is we put all of our weight right into the wrist joint and not into the rest of the fingers in the hand and then all the weight is there and the pressure is there and it's uncomfortable. So, can I use you? Can I get you to demo what we did in that video? I don't know if any of you got to see it, but we did post a video on social media, so you just jump onto my mat. So, this is typically what happens if you make your hands, yeah, really loose, fingers a bit bent, and going to down dog, maybe elbows a bit bent as well, because that sometimes happens. Chest, right? It's hard for him because he's never gotten down dog. It's sort of something like this. And I know we laugh, but this is actually something that we see quite a lot, right? In down dog, as teachers. So to correct this, what we're going to do is we're going to spread out the fingers, press down through those four corners of the hand once again. And again, you always have this part, this wrist crease here lined up with the top edge of your mat. So as you press down, you want to find those four corners of your hand pressing into the ground, but also the fingertips. Fingers are important, so you press down through there, but you keep pressing here. So when you press down through this base part of the knuckle, of the finger, where the fingers join the hand, this brings more of the pressure into that part of your hand and out of this part of your hand. Does that make sense? So that's why it's so important to use your hands purposefully, to press down automatically, fires up the muscles in your arms. You don't even really need to think about it, but they've already become straight. And then this little action as well, of the armpits sort of spiraling towards each other, the inner elbows turning to face each other. Sorry, now it tickles. <laughs> and then, when as we do that, we're then creating much more space to start to press chest towards thighs and create this beautiful long spine. So you see, it all just started with the hands, but we work with the hands and then down dog transforms. Do you see? Okay, thank you, Judge. So um, I want us to just try down dog. We're going to start with that because it's the one that puts the least pressure on the hands. So everybody, get onto it all fours. I'm not going to cue you because I want to just see what happens. So tuck your toes, lift your hips up and come into your downward facing dog. Okay, you can give your legs a little pedal and warm up the back of your legs. I know some of you haven't taken class this morning. Good. Okay, and then 
slowly drop your knees and come back. Okay, so I'm afraid I've picked out two guinea pigs. My very enough, Paris. Can you come and jump on my mat? So we're going to correct it so that you can feel the difference. So if you jump on the mat, come hands and feet like um, you're doing a tabletop position. Okay, and then lift your hips up and come into your down facing dog. <laughs> okay, so can you all see his hands? Yeah? <laughs> can you see this? Ah! Right. <laughs> okay, but can you see the fingers are very close together? Now, not everything has a big spread, and they don't have to be really spread, they just have to be, uh, there has to be space between your fingers, exactly. Wrist crease, can you see how that's turning slightly at this angle? Try and make it more so that it's lined up with the top edge of the mat. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Now you press down through those four corners of your hand, firmly, firmly, firmly into the ground. Now try and spiral these parts to face each other, armpits wrapping. Bend your knees a little bit. You might want to step your feet a little bit closer. Bend your knees so that you take the pressure off your shoulders. Yeah, and your hands. And then you can start to, yeah, press your chest back towards your thighs. Scoop your hips up, draw your belly in, press it back. Keep that pressing down. See how you, when you start thinking about other things, this becomes the last thing you think about. It's so important. It should be the first thing you think about hands. Pressing down, pressing down. Uh -huh. Strong arms, like screwing your hands into the mat. So much better. Does it feel better? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> it's like, oh, that's a go back. Yeah, of course. And Verna, can I use you as well? To correct, is that okay? Yeah. It's a good thing, because you'll really appreciate it in practice when you go back to class next week. So jump on the mat. Because one thing that I noticed that Verna really struggles with is, do you find it hard to stay up in down dog once you're yeah. up there? Yeah. So come into, come on to all fours. Tuck your toes and lift up into your down dog. Where are you looking? Look between your feet. So then you take the pressure here. So it's actually not doing it too bad today, but sometimes then it's a very big step, so it's almost edging into more of a plank. So what we want in down dog is a triangle shape. So you could even just step a little bit closer in, bend your knees, bend your knees, yeah, let them bend. Yeah, and then let the pressure come back into your legs. Because your legs are much stronger than your shoulders and your hands. You've got good spread of your fingers, keep pressing down. Make sure that wrist crease is lined up just at the top edge, so a little bit that way. That's it, yep. Now as you allow your chest, you've got to think about it pressing back this way towards that, but keep this relaxed. Yeah. So this has to spiral towards each other. Keep the arms strong. There's a lot to think about in that dog, I know. Hips lifting up, belly in, and chest pressing back towards thighs. So you have to take that modification of knees bent slightly. Yeah? Heels lifting, a little bit. Heels lifting. Yeah, and then you can bring your weight back more into your legs. Yes. See? A little bit. It's subtle, but it will make a difference over time, Bernard. So just keep thinking about bend knees, let the weight be more in your legs than in your hands and your shoulders. And then you'll be able to maintain the down dog. Okay, so you can down dog. Did it make a difference a little bit? Uh, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but it's not comfortable if I'm. No. Because it's a little bit tight here for you. So the more you do it, the more this will open with that correct form. But just allow yourself to take the pressure off. What I see in you, but in a lot of people, is the struggle in the down dog, sort of like... <laughs> <laughs> Instead, just take the pressure off. Bend your knees, go, oh, okay, I've not the spine. Move it around. Because I want it to feel good and easy. That's not easy, but I feel like there's something to play with, not like we're stuck. Yeah? Good, thank you. Okay. Does so anyone else would like their down dog looking at or correcting or any questions about hands? Anything like that in down dog? I'm sort of speeding through because it's like vinyasa, we have so much to talk about and alignment in these postures. Because basically what I want to work through is the flow. So we call it go through your vinyasa and I don't know, does anyone actually know what that means? Most of you, some of you will definitely know, but a lot of people kind of look at me and go, go through what? So <laughs> our vinyasa is our little flow from our down dog to our plank, the chaturanga, the cobra up upward dog, and then all the way back up to down dog. So we'll move on to um, plank. So the wrists and hands are gonna stay the same. All we're gonna do is shift the weight down. So the hips come down to a long line. Now we can use my visual here. So what we're looking for, I don't know if you can see it on here, I'm gonna highlight it, is this straight line all the way down here. Also straight line all the way down here. Can you see? So common problems that we have in down dog. 
in a plank is dipping hips and sticky up hips. So dipping hips would be when the hips drop down like this. And then all your pressure's on your hands and on your lower back. And also when they're not up, they're kind of here because you don't want to engage your core so much. Core is really important because the core is um, our super tip in anything for the wrist, taking care of the wrists. It takes, basically when you have a strong core, strong shoulders, strong shoulder girdle all over this area of your body, then you can more evenly distribute the weight through your body when you're bearing weight, so such as plank. If you don't have strong core, you have weak core muscles, weak shoulder girdle, then all the weight dumps into the wrist. Does that make sense? So that's why it's important. Please come to Pilates with Josh. <laughs> um, we're working a lot on building that area of the body. Yeah? And that's why it's really important to have this Pilates because it supports everything we do in our yoga practice. Strong body helps you to flow more easily through the postures and then you're able to get more into a meditative state. So, anyway, back to the alignment. When we come into plank, you want the body into a long line. You don't want the hips lifted, you don't want them dipping. You want to try and find that neutral place, the neutral pelvis. George, do you want to talk about neutral pelvis? Of course, yeah. <laughs> so the thing with the neutral spine, we always look for circuit, slight circular of the abdominal area, slight contraction, we call this a little imprint, probably getting close together, rib cage pulling back in. So you have to imagine you have a tail, and that tail goes right all the way, curly right all the way to the belly button. Every time you do plank, you have to have that action, really contracting, little contraction, keeping that spine neutral, that's the healthiest position. Should we spine. do the exercise that you do in class? Okay, yeah. After we do that exercise, it's exactly the same as the cap and cow stretch, but it's difficult for people to locate neutral spine in the cap and cow. That's why they do it on the backs. It's so easy to find. So, what, what we do is uh, we roll the marble, have a little exercise on the marble, which means uh, imagining there's a marble roll with your thumbs and index finger. So, if you bounce up right in the center, keeps our pelvis flat, engages the abdominals and leaves us with a slight arch under our lower backs. So that slight activation of the abs, the little imprint in the abdominal area is the neutral spine. So we try to move from this position, you know, plan, even push If you push walk it. into Pilates, do you know this exercise? Mm -hmm. No? Should we, do you want to quickly all do it? Just yeah. so that everyone can feel it? Okay, I'll take it through it, right? So if you stack your hands up from your knees, keep it apart, we create that kind of shape, with a dominant index finger, just pull ankles and the knees, yeah. Ankles and the knees. And then you imagine there's a marble rolling between your thumbs and index finger. Let's take a big inhale, big arch into the lower back. Big exhale, big tuck of the pelvis. Big inhale, big arch, keep pulling, massaging the lower back, full range of motion. And let's balance that marble right in the center. You should feel that slight engagement. Pelvis neutral, slight engagement of the abdominal, slight arch in your lower back. That's your neutral spine. You, you have to enter that position in all exercises, plant, push up, have, have that engagement. You feel it, guys? Have you all found it? Slight engagement? You have to keep that in mind throughout. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so that's what we have to apply that neutral pelvis, and it's such an awesome exercise. I'm really glad that they do that in that class because. We have to try and find that when we're in our planks. We're flowing really quickly in, in vinyasa, really, so we don't get so much time. But when you come to Pilates, you're holding them for like sometimes a minute, right? So then it's really important that you're not letting all the weight collapse because not only does it put the pressure on your lower back and you don't get the correct engagement of the core, but also wrists are going to suffer in time because you put weight there instead of supporting all of your muscles, all of the weight into your distribute nicely through your core. So let's do a plank. I'm not going to do it for too long. I know some of you guys did doubles this morning. So come into um, your all fours. Make sure your hands are stacked under your shoulders. Spread your fingers, same thing like you did before. So your wrist crease is lined up with the top edge of the mat. That's really important. Spread your fingers, press down through the four corners of your hand. Now step your feet back to the back of your mat. Come onto your toes, heels are high up the toe. Get your hips into the same line with your shoulders. Draw your front body towards your back body. That's really important. So you engage your core, drawing the belly in, holding it really nice and tight. Good, guys. Take a breath. And then slowly lower down. How does it feel? Do you feel more in control when you do it like that? When you really think about 
finding that neutral spine a little bit. So that's what's happening in here, basically, is in this line, we're trying to get the front body and the back body to draw towards each other so it creates a long line as opposed to hips dipping or hips sticking up. And then this long straight neck as well, so your gaze is always down. Then you can check as well that your hands are in the right position, hands underneath shoulders, heels underneath toes, so you all can pull those lines. Does it help to see like this? Yeah? Okay, let's move on to Shataranga because it's the biggest one that I wanted to do today. Um, so, Shataranga is like a yoga, uh, yoga push up basically. Um, the idea is to get the, I'll come back to this, to get the elbow into a 90 degree angle or as opposed to, and that's really difficult, and most people when they do this tend to sort of belly flop down like a fish onto the ground. I'm sure you've seen it. I think you've done that. <laughs> so we kind of end up to a plank, and then we go, okay, lower yourself gracefully to the floor, and you kind of get this, yeah? Because the elbows splay out to the side, and then it's really hard to support yourself. Now, I find it really hard to do these wide elbow push-ups that George does in class. Um, because those muscles are hard for us, especially women, right, to build. So to make it easier for ourselves and to get correct alignment in vinyasa at least, is what we do, is we shift our weight forward from our plank. So we're going to shift forward, you see how the weight comes forward? The elbows come in, not out. So you come in and you lower down slowly. Okay, but for most people what they need to do is the modified version. So we're all going to do the modified version now on the knees. So from your plank, you just drop your knees to the ground, then you've got less weight bearing on your wrist, less pressure. You can really think about that action. Weight shifts forward, elbows stay in, lower to the ground. Yeah, and the aim is to try and get your belly and your chest to hit at the same time. Let's try it. Let's get onto all fours. Spread the hands, make sure you're using your fingers, press down through all four corners. Good, now set your feet back to your plank. Hips in one line, neutral spine. Drop your knees, keep your spine neutral. So you don't let your hips dip. You keep your front body drawing towards your back body. You bring your elbows in and shift forward and lower to the ground. Elbows in. And then come all the way back up. Okay, let's try it again. So what I saw quite a lot of people doing then was allowing the chest to come down first. So it's sort of going like this. Yeah, so what we're gonna try and do instead is shift forward Draw in your lower abdominal muscles more so that you then have the strength to sort of get your belly and your chest to hit at the same time. Okay? Try it again. Into your fours. Step back to your plank. Find the neutral spine first, then drop your knees. So feel your, uh, with your knees on the ground, feel how you really engage. Keep your spine neutral, shift forward and lower down. Elbows in close. So much better. Do you feel a bit better? Yeah? Okay. So the next thing we do, you all really went into it then, is cobra. So cobra pose is really important because a lot of people try to go into upward facing dog, which is the next one along. And this one. Before they've mastered this one. Why is this really hard? A lot of pressure on the wrists. Okay, the only weight here is here and here. But basically all of your weight is here. So unless you've been practicing a long time and you've got really strong wrists and really flexible mobility in your wrist joint, just don't bother for now. Work on this because you're doing the same movement with your spine, but you're not putting the weight on your wrists. So when I did my training, my teacher wouldn't even teach us this. Like none of your students basically will need this unless you're just going and teaching experience yogi because everyone wants to do this, it looks beautiful, but putting so much weight on your wrists when you've not got the experience yet of how to take care of them, it's just gonna ask yourself an injury. We'll go over it, but we wanna focus on this today. Okay, so wrists, shoulders in the same line, chest reaching forward, long neck, not crunch neck, okay? So when we come into a cobra, just think about a cobra, you want to be reaching forward, lifting up, reaching the heart forward, not crunching into the neck. So let's go through that little stage from, we'll do it all, we'll add it together. So we'll do, go to down dog, to plank, chaturanga, and then lower to the ground. And then we'll lift up to cobra. Okay? So hands on the ground, knees on the hips, spread the fingers 
wide and put the toes. Now draw the belly in, big inhale, lift the hips up, downward dog. So just take a breath, find out what you need to do to correct your down dog. So chest pressing back towards thighs. Maybe you need to bend the knees a little bit to take the pressure out of the shoulders and the hands. Good. And then you're just gonna allow your weight to ripple forward into your plank pose, rising onto the toes, dropping the hips down into a straight line. Okay, let's go back up to down dog. I'm gonna take us back. So go back to down dog, and we're just gonna flow that a couple of times. So inhale, ripple forward, draw the belly in, lower to the, onto the toes, hips come down into a long line, plank pose. Draw the front body to the back body. Does the hips dip down. Inhale, lift the hips back up, downward dog. So this is a great exercise you can do to build some strength. So one more time, let's take it. Rising to the toes, rippling forward, lower the body, long line, plank pose. Good. Okay, so from here, everyone drop your knees without letting the muscle engagement be released. You keep your belly nice and tight. Shift your weight forward, elbows stay close as you lower all the way to the ground. Chaturanga, it's a modified version. And then reaching heart and chest forward, tops of your feet on the ground, legs engaged, lift your chest and heart forward, shoulders back, neck long. Good, and then lower down to the ground and relax. Okay, so questions, I want you to ask me. Because I feel like some questions. <laughs> And if not, I can suggest what they might be, but I feel like I know what you need to ask me. The feet moving a little bit sometimes. So this is, someone's come to me after class, I don't think she's here, it was Lee, asking, um, am I supposed to move my feet from down dog to plank? Because you managed to, you and Joey managed to flow through so nicely and I have to kind of adjust my feet and I feel clumsy. Do you, uh, do you feel like that, any of you? Yeah, I do the same thing. Yeah? To get the weight going in the way. So don't worry if you do have to adjust your feet. It does take a bit of time to get that kind of knowledge of where to step each time so that you know this is my down dog, this is my plank. So if you get into your down dog and you've had to make an adjustment, such as like bending your knees, maybe bringing your feet a bit closer, whatever it is you've had to do, and then you come into your plank and your shoulders are over your wrist, you have to step your feet back. And so it's okay to adjust yourself, but the idea eventually is that your plank and you, you know, it's the same distance, all you have to do is then lower your hips by shifting the weight forward. So, but don't worry for now, if you do have to adjust your feet, just try to think a little bit more about making sure that you're taking care of your body. It's more important in this practice that you're taking care of it. If, you, if you're in your down dog and then you shift forward to your plank and without moving your feet, but then your shoulders come over your wrists and you've got this real high extension in your wrists, then you're just gonna hurt yourself over time for the way we say don't, um, you know, to jeopardize form for the glory of the pose. Because over time, you're just gonna put strain on your wrists. So, have you all heard of Ahimsa? I know some of you will have done for sure. So Ahimsa, it's, it translates as non-violence. And in yoga, we have to practice Ahimsa at all times. This is really important in everything we do. If you are ever pushing yourself into pain just because you think it looks pretty, like doing upward facing dog when your wrists aren't quite ready and warmed up properly, or just shifting forward and not moving your feet or adjusting accordingly and putting a lot of pressure on your wrists, then you're not practicing ahimsa, and so it's not taking care of yourself. Does that make sense? So always, always, this is first, take care of me. If I have to readjust my feet, I readjust them because I want my form to be correct, my alignment to be correct, okay? So don't worry. It'll come over time as you get more experience in knowing the stance of your body and the distance your hands and feet need to be. Okay, so um, let's just move on a little bit. I want to ask George to just step in and talk about plank because his plank, you do a lot of different types of plank. Um, and side plank is different as well. So when we do our side plank in vinyasa, the modified version would be to drop the lower leg, as you can see in this one. I'm sure I've brought in a plenty stick. Yeah. It's to drop the lower leg to take um, some of the weight off. So any modifications, basically, what I'm going to talk about now, are all just relieving some of the weight bearing so that there's less pressure on the wrist joint. So, or on the shoulder, or whatever it is. Like, especially for side plank, a lot of people find it hard on the shoulder, also hard on the wrist. So the modified version is to lower the knee. Um, in, in Pilates, it's the other leg, isn't it? But I just want to explain that there's no, this doesn't mean that ours is right, that's wrong. It's just, they're different. So just know that, it's fine. It's the same as 
we call this half moon in Bikram, and then we call this half moon in um, Vinyasa. Do you know what I mean? So it's just just different styles of yoga, different styles of practice, but no, nothing's right, nothing's wrong. So lowering the leg is a good modification for side plank. Um, anyway, we'll come to modifications in a second. So I want to talk about side plank. The wrist doesn't move. So you can come to it from a normal plank. Your wrist free still stays lined up that way. A lot of people end up trying to like spiral the hand or the hand collapses and that's why it's really difficult. So I don't want you to hate me, but we're just gonna briefly do a side plank. So everyone coming from a normal plank, making sure your hands and shoulders are in that straight line, just like in the photo. Spine is in a long line with the legs. Draw the front body to the back body. Okay, now bring weight into your right hand and lift your left arm up. Either stacking your feet or toe to heel and arm reaches up. Body comes into a long line. Breathing, holding, and then slowly bring your hand back to the ground and lower your knees. If you feel different when you get your wrist in the same position. And then here, can I borrow you for a second for this one? Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so if you come onto my mat and just do a normal plank. <clears throat> Come into your normal plank, push your toes. That's it, good. Keep this drawing in. And now you're going to bring weight into your left hand and stack your feet and turn your. Oh, oh, so it's good this time. This is still nice and solid. So when we did the first round, I'm just going to let you come back down. This hand was sort of like this. Yeah, the collapsing. Way, uh, the wrong. Yeah, you could feel it wrong. Yeah. yeah. So did it feel different just then when you did it? That was great then, right? So the hand didn't move at all. So you can do it again so everyone can see if that's okay. This hand stays exactly where it is. Come into your plank. Yep. Good. Better. Feel okay? Yeah. That's just a simple thing. But your hands are really important because I've seen a few times a little bit collapsing. Yeah, because I feel pressure in my fingers. Yeah. So it's not really in my wrist, it's really in my fingers. Mm. A bit. Mm. It I can be tight as well. All the bones in our hands and our fingers, you know, sometimes they don't get moved enough or they get stuck in just using one movement a lot. What do you do for work? Yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> so that's why it's important. All these little exercises are good for you then. Good. Okay, has anyone got questions about side plank before I ask George to just talk about lactated planks? No? Okay, George, anything you'd like to talk about with planks? Okay, I'll quickly explain the main differences there. Yeah, 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 please. So they're really important for building strength into the side of the body, the side planks. Really important them every time, strengthening shoulders, mobility, flexibility. If it's only, it's a full body option, so it's really important to do them. We do them every time. If we hold them more than a few seconds, we always have to do it on the elbow. A bit, bit less uh, stress for the wrist. The easiest version, which I never teach, but the <laughs> easiest version is an easier version. <laughs> There's so many modifications. We extend, extend the, the knees, same line of the body, bend the knees, and then we lift up. It's the same action, but a half plank, we call this one a half plank, but it's very, very easy. I haven't seen anyone that needs that. We have to be mindful of squeezing again, literally everything engaging the core. You have to let the core carry you through it, okay? So that's, that's a really, really good way to develop shoulder strength and flexibility in the shoulder. We do that for a minute, so we have to do it off the elbow. For the forearm plank, we always hold it more than a few seconds than the vena, so we have to do it off the, off the forearms. In, we have to see, glue, glue the legs together, helps us engage the core more, squeeze, squeezing everything together. We're aiming for that same straight line, which means heels together, squeezing legs, squeezing glutes, pulling slightly the belly in, and you straight the line. So we, we this, in this plank, we're aiming to open the chest a little bit as well, which means we don't push through the arms as much. We do push through the arms, but we keep the chest and shoulders slightly open. And there's another one, which is more and more challenging, of the forearms you could do, and I sometimes ask you to do is, we do that in gymna gymnastics, we push even more, which creates a little forward bend, which is what we don't want, but it creates a lot more strength into the body. That's a lot more challenging, but with aiming, it's a great, great posture, but Strengthening the transverse, lower back, and then uh, building strength in the shoulders again. So that really amazing daily, weekly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's interesting, like you said about the shoulder strength and how important that is, and then the core strength and all of these more transverse muscles and the abdominal muscles, because 
all of that is then able to you're then able to distribute your the, pr the stress uh, through your body more evenly the kind of weight through your body more evenly not just putting it right into one place so the more you practice and the more you come to pilates class as well to build that muscle strength throughout your whole body it takes the pressure off just this one tiny little jump that makes sense